bearing down on the island of Bermuda, the National Hurricane Center calls a Category 3 storm extremely dangerous with maximum sustained winds of 124 miles, 20 miles per hour. This is actually a view of Nicole from the International Space Station. The British territory is getting pounded with strong winds, heavy rain, and damaging storm surge. Our Don Daler is in the town of Hamilton with the latest, and he joins us by phone. Don, what can you tell us? What are the conditions there right now? Well, uh, I'm sitting on the covered porch of the Coral Beach Club, and I have to tell you, I'm looking out now uh, at palm trees that are still being buffeted by high winds. I'm looking at heavy surf, but it is much less violent than it was just a few hours ago. Uh, when Nicole slammed ashore, it was one of the most fierce storms I've ever been through, and I've I think this is my fifth hurricane. The trees were bent sideways. I literally could not stand up in the wind. That's how fierce it was. Uh, when the eye finally passed over around 11 o'clock this morning, we made our way out to try to assess the damage. And surprisingly, we saw moderate damage. We saw some trees down. We saw some flooding. We saw some, uh, some sheds that may, were destroyed. There were reports that there was flooding in downtown Hamilton. Uh, and I preface that all by saying that, that we don't know what's happening on the north side of the island now that the major part of the storm has moved past us here in the south to the north. But all reports that we're hearing is that there was was not any serious, serious damage and no fatalities, uh, which is amazing because this was a, a terrific storm, just, just breathtaking in its intensity. And honestly, I think that there are three main reasons why it didn't suffer as much damage as, as almost any other place that faced a Cat 3 or a Cat 4 storm would. One is Bermuda is literally a volcano. It's, an, it's built on an ancient volcano in the North Atlantic. And so that's incredibly strong bedrock that they've built the buildings into. Number two, they build their buildings like they're bomb shelters. They're foot-thick walls. They have concrete on top instead of shingles. They're built to withstand the multiple storms. And even though they don't get many major hurricanes through here, they get a, a lot of storms. And so they've created a community here that's prepared for that. And number three, there is a coral reef that surrounds the island that protects them from the storm surge that has done so much destruction in other places, including with Hurricane Matthew just this past week. Scientists have discovered a new fault line in California that may explain the lack of a major earthquake that's years overdue. The newly discovered fault is called the Salton Trough. It's located underneath an inland lake called the Salton Sea. The trough is parallel to the San Andreas fault line, the largest in California. Scientists say the Salton Trough may be taking pressure off the San Andreas. The Salton Sea area was the site of a swarm of tremors in the past weeks. That that pointed to the possibility of a major quake along the San Andreas Fault. It's been more than 300 years since a major quake has occurred along the San Andreas. Geologists say the salt and trough was previously unknown because it was hard to detect under the lake's waters. Along with two other students, 18-year-old high school student Alyssa Ridenor is suing Pine Richland School District in Pittsburgh for violating trans students' constitutional rights. The school recently passed a new policy that forces students to use unisex bathrooms or bathrooms corresponding to the gender they were assigned at birth. Already nationally a contentious issue, the school district's new policy is a step backwards for trans rights in a state where many school districts are moving towards more trans-inclusive policy. I'm Laura Harris, and we have some breaking news for you right now. Just in, Legoland is being evacuated after a bomb threat was made at the theme park. We're being told right now the theme park is sending tweets to people who were there saying the park will be closed for the remainder of the day. Winter Haven police are on scene right now trying to investigate to see exactly what happened. If you're not familiar with this area, take a look at this map here. Legoland is in Winter Haven off Cypress Garden Road. You see it right there, right near Lake Eloise. It sits on about 128 acres, so you can imagine what kind of undertaking it is to get all of these people evacuated from the park. Uh, this is the tweet that we got from Legoland just moments ago. Again, Winter Haven police investigating the validity of this threat right now. We're being told people in the park or who were tweeting at the park, uh, they're getting tweets back from Legoland saying the park will be closed for the remainder of the day. We haven't heard any news of any injuries, anything like that. Again, they are investigating this bomb threat 
right now. We're working to get more information on this threat for you right now. We've reached out to Legoland and Winter Haven Police. Action Air One is on the way to the scene, and we will have updates on air and online. The number of hate crimes in the UK jumped 41% in the month after it voted to leave the European Union. Before the vote in June, the Leave movement was accused of being rooted in xenophobia, and after, some government officials claimed the Brexit results were used as justification to commit hate crimes. These stats are only correlational, but it's important to note that in the days immediately after the referendum, reported hate crimes doubled. Over 5,000 hate crime offenses recorded in the month after the vote were racially or religiously motivated. Since August, the rate of hate crimes has returned to levels seen earlier in the year, but 2016's numbers overall have been a big increase compared to the year before, which had already seen an unusually high number of hate crimes. One of Vladimir Putin's most powerful supporters, a man who just won big in a parliamentary election in Russia, makes a menacing prediction. Vladimir Zhirinovsky, an ultra-nationalist firebrand who now leads Russia's third biggest party, warns Americans about their votes. They are voting for peace on planet Earth if they vote for Trump. But if they vote for Hillary, it's war. Zhirinovsky says Hillary Clinton, quote, craves power, that she'd create panic if elected. Then he goes even further. If Hillary Clinton wins, it will be the last U.S. president ever. The Kremlin scrambled to distance itself from Zhirinovsky, a foreign ministry spokeswoman telling CNN that was just his personal opinion. But analysts say Zhirinovsky is helping Putin. President Putin has stoked nationalism in Russia in recent years in order to shore up uh, political support. And so uh, it's useful for him when he has these types of ultranationalist characters like Zhirinovsky uh, making these kinds of remarks. Meanwhile tonight, Putin and his inner circle are pushing back against the latest allegations that their hackers are trying to sabotage America's vote. CNN has learned investigators believe a cyber attack which exposed voter data in Florida was the work of the Russians. The Obama administration has just publicly named and shamed Putin's government for hacks of the Democratic Party, accusing the Kremlin of trying to destabilize America's political system. Putin says the U.S. is trying to deflect from the damaging content of the stolen emails. They started this hysteria, saying that this hacking is in Russia's interests. This has nothing to do with Russia's interests. Analysts say if there's anything to what U.S. officials accuse Putin of doing, this is unprecedented. It's extraordinary for a foreign leader to go to these lengths to interfere in an American election. And, uh, you know, I think it partly it shows how bad the relationship is between the United States and Russia uh, at this point. Experts say if his hackers are meddling in America's election, it's a cold calculation by Putin. What he wants to show is that whoever it is who becomes the American president after November 8th is as flawed as the next person. Americans are getting ready for new fighting in Iraq. Iraq's army is preparing an assault on Mosul, the country's second largest city. It has been under ISIS control for two years. Holly Williams got rare access to the base where American advisors are helping the Iraqis get ready. She is now... Years, ...and there are now around 6,000 U.S. service members back here again, preparing for what could be a decisive battle against ISIS. 40 miles outside Mosul, Gayara Air Base was ISIS territory just over three months ago. Now recaptured, it's operated by the 101st Airborne Division from Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Anything else going on? Nearby Camp Swift will be the headquarters for the Mosul battle, where officers from the U.S. coalition and Iraq are working together. Colonel Brett Sylvia did two tours of Iraq after the U.S. invasion of 2003, but insisted that this time around, American troops are not here for combat. That is not... Uh, the fight that we have today. Today we advise them and we assist them. So you won't be fighting on the front lines? No. And yet we've seen uh, Americans lose their lives here over the last few months. Well, this is a combat environment. It's not to say that it's not dangerous here. Major General Greg Valeski served in Mosul during the U.S. occupation in 2009. 
Now he's in charge of American ground forces. Help that right? They're, we are getting indications that they are leaving. Even so, Colonel Sylvia admitted that America's limited role here is sometimes frustrating. Certainly things are much easier uh, when you're forward and you've got the rifle in your hand and, and you are maneuvering. Uh, you have great control over everything that you're doing. So it's harder to help the Iraqis than it is just to do it yourself. Isn't that always the case? Those U.S. officers told us there are still around three to 5,000 ISIS fighters inside Mosul, and they are laying explosives to protect themselves. Gail? Holly Williams reporting from Erbil. Thank you. UNESCO has renewed a resolution criticizing Israel for restricting Muslim access to a holy site in East Jerusalem. The draft text repeatedly refers to the site known to Jews as Temple Mount and Muslims as Al-Aqsa Compound by its Muslim names, a move which has angered the Prime Minister who says it amounts to a denial of Jewish history. The theatre of the absurd at UNESCO continues and today the organisation adopted another delusional decision which says that the people of Israel have no connection to the Temple Mount. The motion put forward by Arab states was approved by 24 votes, six against and 26 abstentions. A Palestinian delegate defended the cultural body's decision. Israel pretends that in this decision, uh, Palestinians and the Arab group uh, denies the historic importance of the old city of Jerusalem to uh, the Jewish people. Actually, uh, if you read the third paragraph of the decision, you will see that it starts by the recognition of the historic importance for the three monotheistic religions. The holy site, which was taken by Israel in the 1967 Six-Day War, has been the flashpoint of Israeli-Palestinian violence in recent years. One of these faces could be the next president of France. Seven right-wing rivals faced off in the first presidential primary debate to decide the conservative nomination. They sparred over taxes, the bikini and national identity in a two-hour TV show that produced few fireworks. Former President Nicolas Sarkozy promised strong leadership after five years of socialist rule, saying the unprecedented impact of migration, mass unemployment, the toughest taxes in Europe. My conclusion from all of this is that the alternative must be strong, dynamic, immediate and concrete. Immediate. Polls showed that the more moderate front-runner Alain Juppé was the most convincing candidate. We are diverse. We don't have the same religion, skin color or roots. We have to respect diversity which contributes to our richness on two conditions. First, that it doesn't divide us and second, that we strengthen what we have in common. If we only have differences, it doesn't make us a country. The candidates will get another chance to make a dent in Juppé's lead, with two more televised debates scheduled before the first round of primaries on November 20th.
face. Face. Holy frig. the road looking at the beautiful clouds and then this base literally a giant fucking alien head and then the clouds behind me are trippy but that fucking head man it's fucking weird look at that it's like creeping behind the fucking trees and shit and I'm not even on dope at least not yet Pretty fucking gnarly, dude. Look at the eyes and shit. It's fucking weird. Pretty interesting. Just staring. Bullshit, what's really going on in the world? Giant faces in the sky. Crazy. Stop sign. June 6, 2017. We are looking at Red Dog to the southeast. Keep your eye on this area over here. And we begin to see a large orb. can see some detail on that, some stripes. Some interaction. We 
We see the chem plane coming. All right, look at that again. Pretty amazing. So this may be some of the best footage that I've seen coming up. Right there. Debunk that. <laughs> and that Yep, I think that's one of my favorites right there. Good. I think I'm going to blow it up and show you a close-up of this. I've also enhanced it a little bit just by uh, um, adjusting the contrast, saturation, and brightness a little bit. But with that cloud in front of this object... There is no way that can be anything other than what you're seeing. I know some of you have started to question, oh, I think maybe that's a lens flare and that sort of thing. You know, some of these could have been lens flares. Uh, I will, that would be impossible. You know, it's this sort of thing. I walk outside and I see this and it just kind of makes me sick. You know, I don't really know exactly what what the purpose is. I mean, I, you know, I know a lot of the theories and things like that. I don't know what's in it, but it's just kind of like, what the heck is going on? It just kind of spooks me out a little bit. Okay, so <clears throat> I think I see something here. And after listening to Scott and Claudia, the physicists on the uh, the Bureau channel, um, they were talking about a pretty large object that's that's close. And I'm wondering if this could be an object. So I'm going to play with the bright a little. Possible, very possible. 
All right, well, I thought this object was strange enough to want to show you this little thing right here. It's very bizarre. And in the next image, it's still there. Not as clear, however. And I did enhance it a little bit. A bit blurry. But interesting nonetheless. Yeah, it almost, uh, these things almost look like it could be craft or something like that, but um, you know, could this be the light coming from the back of an object here? Very possibly. Do not know. Here's another image of that uh, very large bird that uh, I've called the pterodactyl. I mean, the length of that wing is just incredible. Tough to see when it gets pixelated like that, but uh, nevertheless, this is the same probably the same big, large flying creature we've seen in the same area now uh, for quite a few months. Well, here are some photographs sent in by a subscriber. And this looks like the Star Wars Death Star with the big hole in it. We've seen that many times. An enhanced version. No idea what this is up here. But yes, indeed, that is the Star Wars Death Star. Good catch. Okay, so here's a whole series of great photographs from Turkey. And um, I'm just going to run through. This is looking to the south, about 2.15, chemtrail in front. These are pretty spectacular photographs. I'm trying to hide it here. That's oh, great work. Great work. Let's go backwards now. I mean, this stuff is just crazy. <laughs> wow, look at that. Yeah, 
wow is all I can say. And our last picture for this video is uh, something that was sent in by Kathy. And sure enough, this is a, a very strange looking object right there. It does in fact look like the Star Wars Death Star. So I've enhanced a little bit. And yes, it does appear to be an anomalous object. Right next to our sun. So, all right, everybody, just want to let everybody know that I'm okay. I'm fine. I've just been uh, uh, very busy with work, traveling, things like that. And uh, I'm quite frankly, trying to just uh, do other things other than... Um, stare at these AV, these FAA cams and things like that. So uh, anyway, thank you all for your kind thoughts and uh, comments, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.